Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's still water tutorial. What you see in the vice is a very simple zonker. Now zonkers are really effective late in the season and early in the season. Now I know we've kind of missed out a bit on uh, both of those things, but it's something that I find works all year round, if nothing else. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vice then is a Hanak H970 barbless hook, it's a long shank hook, it's on a size 6 and it's heavy wire in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Vivas, this is the E15, it's at 8 aught and as you can see it's a lime green. It comes up a little yellow on the uh, camera but it is lime green. And the first thing I'm going to do then is get my wax and get a good bit of wax onto the thread. I'm not going to be too fussy cleaning out the excess wax because the body is going to be covered. So I'm going to catch my thread on in behind the eye. Just use my tail end as a little guide. It doesn't need to be particularly tidy going down the shank. As I said, there's going to be quite a lot of materials as you've seen from the original fly. There's, there's quite a lot going on. Now as I've just come past the point, I'm going to come in with my scissors and just take away my waist end. So the first thing that's going to go in is the tailing fibres, uh, so the, the yellow that you've seen. And what I'm using is trout line, and this is um, ghost streamer hair for some uh, streamer patterns that I've been working away at. Still not quite happy with, but what this material is, is it's super mobile. And that's that's what I like about it. It, it you know, it's going to give you lots of movement in the water, unlike things like uh, glister and some other stiffer materials. This will move lovely in the water. So what I'm going to do is take a bit, pull it off like that, put the packet to the side, and then I'm going to make sure I've got it cleaned out and make sure the ends are tapered. I don't want big thick ends on my tail. So I've got about half here, you can see it's there's not much material here. It, it may look like a lot on camera, but there's not very much material at all. So I'm going to grab that now. I've got it folded in half, my two tapered ends coming off the back here. And what I want it to do is come back twice the length of the shank. That's about right. And then I'm going to catch that in just with a cross, like so. Now, I'm just going to hold on to the material there. And in big open turns, I want to just secure that onto the shank. It's not being clamped down too hard at the moment. Then when I get up near the front, I'm able to come in with my snips and remove that. Now don't throw this away because we're going to use that for the throat hackling towards the end. So I'm just going to put a little twist in it, put it to the side and the next thing I'm going to do is tie in my wire. Now I'm using the uh, Fish On Gold, this is 0 0.14 and uh, that's the, the diameter of the rib. And I've got some here that I've been working with. I'm going to catch that in the length of where my thread stopped there. And then when I come down, I'm, I can clamp down a lot better on my tailing fibres there. I'll bring that all the way down to the butt of the fly. Just try and tuck that out of the way. What I must do, this is quite a new vice, but I must get a, a material spring on the end here just so I can clip stuff in. I've, I've not used one before, but I just think it might come in handy. Now, next, we're going to use some black zonker strip. Um, I just usually use this length, but I've got a little piece left from the last fly I tied, and it's probably round and about the right length. And again, what I want is... I'm going to use the hide as a guide and I want the length 
of the shank and then I'm simply going to damp my fingers down to split the hair just to make it a little bit easier if you get a little bit damp on it does um, make it a bit easier to work with so I've damped it down I'm going to lay it on where my thread is and capture that in with two turns like so now as you can see it's just coming by the point there which is, is ideal for this little leftover bit and I'm going to get a couple of turns in front and putting, you might notice I do this quite a bit in my videos where I've locked material in and then a couple of turns in front and all that does is stops the thread backing up and loosening up on your materials regardless of what you're tying so I'm just going to ease that back I'm going to add in the body material next and what I'm using for that is from Troutline can't see because I've pushed that in the way but it's from Troutline and this is the Troutline UV Rainbow Tactical Dubbing it's a lovely sort of mix of uh, greens, purples and blacks so again I'll just push that out of the way and I'm going to start dubbing near the bottom and then I can just push push up my dubbing as I go it's quite a lot of area of body here so what I'll probably have to do is have two goes at this so I'll get enough dubbing on initially to do maybe half the body and then I can come back and add more dubbing so I'm going to pull my zonker strip really well back so I can get right in with my dubbing material there at the back end and then I can just build up and I want to keep the body fairly even I didn't even get half, got about a quarter there with that that amount of dubbing but the fly can take it so don't worry I'm always preaching that less is more but um, on this occasion more is more <laughs> Yeah, you need plenty of dubbing on the body because we're going to tease some of that fibre out uh, to get the effect we want from the fly and I might even need to add another little bit just to finish it off don't want too much near the front of the nose there uh, but I'll come back just so I've got a reasonable taper and that should do me at that juncture next then and what I should have done is I'm going to measure it across like so and I'm just going to part my zonka strip again just where my thread's sitting and I maybe want to get a few fibres the body side of it so that's looking not too bad I've stretched that very tightly across the back and I'm going to come in with my thread and wrap that down nice and tight again in front and then I can come in with my snips confident in the fact that I've put a couple of turns in front and it's not going to go anywhere then I can remove that and that's looking not too bad at all so next we're going to bring our gold rib over and what I want to do before that is I'm going to get my comb this is uh, basically my dubbing brush it doubles up as a comb I quite like it and then just comb out the zonka strips and again I've licked the thumb and forefinger of my right hand I'm just going to damp that down it just makes laying down the rib a little bit easier so the first turn is a simple one on top of the green thread where we caught our zonker strip in then the next turn we're going to take in little bite sized chunks just over an eighth of an inch 
try and keep them nice and even. It's always difficult with uh, these kind of patterns because you're you're trying to keep it nice and even as well as not trap in the zonker fibers, which is going to give this fly amazing movement in the water. So it can be a wee bit fiddly, but it's worth worth the effort. I've just caught more fibers in there than I'd like, so I'm going to come back. There we go. Nailed it down. If you're not happy, don't be afraid to just damp it down again. Split it open. And eventually, after a lot of faff in there, <laughs> you'll get to your thread. And you can put a couple of wraps in. And then your thread can come over like so. That's looking pretty good. Now that I've got the thread trapped in, I'm going to keep tension on it and just twist away my wire. Oh, it doesn't want to come this morning. Come on. There we go. It should have been a bit more subtle than that, but uh, it's come loose, which is the main thing. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Just a wee bit too much tabbing at the end of that. So, so far so good. Next we want to add in, if you remember back to when we tied our tail in, we've got some excess here. And what I want to do is just tease that out so I get a taper, like so. And I want this, the throat hackle, to be the length of the body. Now I've got that, I can turn it, invert my vise, lay it on. If you haven't got the facility to invert your vise, you can simply take the fly out and turn the hook round. Uh, but I think most vices nowadays, even the even the quite reasonably priced ones, have got the facility to turn so that you can get access to the uh, underside of your fly. Once you've got that tied in, you can remove your excess. I won't throw this away because uh, there's obviously enough here to be used for something else. It will just go back in the packet until I can find another use for it. So I've got that in, I can bring my vise back around to where it normally is. And this fly's got a rather large head. So bear with me while I build that for you. Right in behind the eye initially. And you want quite a bit of this green shown. It's a real hot spot. And uh, the colour, well, I've mentioned before in many videos actually, the green and black colour combination for early and late season is, is hard to be beaten. And uh, I'm sure when I can get back out fishing, this is going to do me a great turn on the Albury Estates or Manningford, wherever I can get to. take a wee while even with this uh, 80 thread but there we go I've got there in the end and I'm just looking for my quick finish tool and with this thicker thread four turns will do it and it's going to be well secured by some Solaris UV bone dry so don't be overly worried about uh, securing it. In the old days I'd have got away with a half hitch there and just um, got the Solaris. So I'm using the UV bone dry cure. If if you wish you can use head cement, super glue, it doesn't really matter. I just like to use this stuff because it, you can instantly put the fly away in the box once it's dry. So I'm just going to turn Make sure I catch all that in. Now for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to give it one coat. But uh, once I've come off camera, I'll give it another coat and that'll be good to go. 
just cure that off if you've never fished these big patterns before um, I find the best way to fish them is on a fairly long leader 12 to 15 feet uh, and just mix up your retrieves bit of figure of eight bit of pooling and uh, the takes can be absolutely phenomenal okay now before I finish off I'm going to come in with my dubbing brush get right underneath where I dubbed in that material and just pull out that trout line rainbow dub and as you can see you get a fantastic effect and when it's wet when it's in the water this it looks absolutely stunning so just uh, get the fly the way you want it and as I say I'm going to give it another coat once I go off camera and that will go straight in the box there we go thanks very much for watching what I'm going to do next is stick a fly up there for you and a fly up there if you like this pattern you'll love these so why don't click on one of them if you haven't subscribed to the channel please think about clicking the little button there in the corner I would really appreciate your support and I'll see you all next time